pay full system man once again and since of course the expendables has come out and I've been ra you know raving about it forever I want to talk about Cobra which actually a few other people wanted me to talk about the film and that's no problem because Cobra is without doubt one of my favorite films of all time not just my favorite action films but my favorite films of all time because for me for me I don't find anything wrong with Cobra like I, when I look at action films I want to see them like Cobra to me this film I mean even the poster alone is badass look at that poster the tagline cram is a disease meet the cure badass to me this film is the epitome of badass for me and I don't love it like oh I look she's I wholeheartedly love it and the thing of it is it should not begin a 4.8 out of 10 on IMDb and shit like that and it's like I I think it's underrated. I'll call it underrated because not many people talk about it. Or they talk about it in, in not really a positive light. But, but I mean, Cobra is based on Sylvester Stallone's Dirty Harry. And it's a darker version, and I love it. I mean, this film, you have, of course, Marion Cobretti, who, this crazy motherfucker, kills people in a supermarket, and they're like, get the Cobra. And he comes in in this badass car. Once again, badass. It's like a 1950 Mercury, which actually uh, Stallone owned and then got stolen. But then basically, I guess the motherfucker tried to sell it on eBay or something like that years later. And Stallone was able to, I think Stallone was able to get his car back. And he actually sort of did a little bit of motif in the uh, Expendables, where he had that souped up car, which is very similar to his 19, the 1950 Mercury, which I like. That wasn't a shotgun, folks. That was this. Because some people think that me opening a can sound like it's a shotgun, so. But the movie. I mean, from beginning to end, one, okay, one critique right the, off the bat is they look at the, the 80s, like sunglasses. That's how they were in the 80s. You know, you can't fault them. It's like faulting the 50s film because it has a 50s car. Those, those were the glasses of the 80s. I mean, what are they supposed to do? You know, digitally alter the glasses so that, you know, it's regular. And I thought they looked cool. I stole them, and I think wears them well. You know, of course, you have the matchstick. And one people complain about the Coca-Cola advertisements, but in my opinion, I don't think it's that bad. It is a fucking supermarket, you know, it's a supermarket. Supermarkets have Coca-Cola products, okay? They have Coca-Cola products. They have it. And what I love about it is, like, he comes in, he, you know, badass entrance, he goes in the supermarket, you know, he talk. he allows a shot. And I don't like lousy shots. He wastes the kid for nothing. Now I think it's time for someone to waste you. And he's shooting at him. He dates a fucking he dates a fucking beer. He drinks beer. He's like, and he tastes the beer. Snaps it, and then throws it. Like, come on, how's that not badass for a character? He drinks beer. Like he doesn't. This guy ain't gonna do shit to him. I can drink beer all I want. Throws it. Kits in. He has his gun. It's like a Colt. What is it? I think it even says here, Colt 45. He's like, that's okay, I don't shop here. Just wonderful dialogue, like, uh, you know, you have the bad guy saying he wants the TV crew, and he goes, I can't, can't do that. Why not? I don't deal with psychos. I put them away. I ain't no psycho, man. What was it? Then? I'm a member of the New World. Your disease, and I'm the cure. Takes a knife, slaps it right in his fucking chest, drop it, <laughs> gets the motherfucker, comes in, depressed, gives him shit. Did you use you know too much force? I use everything that I had. He's like, don't you know criminals have rights? And he takes the motherfucker. Just, you tell that to his family, huh? I'm like, fuck yeah, these motherfuckers you know need to fucking wake up and listen. And he comes home, and you have the stupid asshole. You know, parked in the spot, and he moves it. And the guy's giving him shit, and Cobra's like, that's bad for your help. What is, PJ? 
me and he rips his shirt. And I know it's a technical fuck up because you <laughs> rip the shirt. And you see the little bit of uh you know how they give the microphones, they tape it up. You can see it there. But you know, if you want to think about it logically Okay, I know it's bullshit. I know they fucked up. But hell, maybe the guy was undercover. <laughs> the guy's undercover and you know, he's in the The guy's oh shit, you know. That's what the laundry or something like that. I don't know what he says the cobra, but and cobra comes in and once again it's like the cool stuff where he gets pizza. He doesn't use a pizza cutter, that's for pussies. He uses a fucking scissors to cut his pizza. Not a knife, not a dingy little knife, not a sissy pizza cutter, a fucking scissors that cuts the, cuts the pizza. I'm like, I want to do that one day. Just get pizza and get some scissors and just, you know. And then basically he's watching the news and there's these uh, killings by the Night Slasher who, and the news says he kills old people, kids, little kids. These guys don't fuck around. And one another reason why I love the film. You have a kick-ass bad guy, kick-ass good guys. So kick-ass good guy Cobra, and the kick-ass bad guy is this team of killers, which I think is a great idea, team of killers, including Brian Thompson, who's really the main night slasher. Scary motherfucker. Like, a bad guy who can you believe is creepy and scary, that's hard to find. That's fucking hard to find. And Brian Thompson did it. I mean, whether it be his knife with the fucking... No, it's a knife. That's not good enough. It's a knife with a handle with spikes on it. I love this shit. And they kill people. And it's like, I love that this film is has elements of a slasher movie as well. I love that. Especially a scene later on where, you know, you introduce the Brigitte Nielsen, sort of a model. And... One thing leads to another, she had seen a killing, and later on they go after her, they kill like her friend, they're chasing after her, and she's able to get away. And then Cobra and his partner, Rennie Santoni, who's actually the partner of uh, Dirty Harry in the first Dirty Harry film, more motifs. I mean, you have Andrew Robinson, who's the bad guy, and uh, Dirty Harry, he plays an asshole here. And then you have the other guy, sort of his captain, Art Lafleur. Who's sort of more with Cobra, supporting Cobra. Um, you see him in a lot of films. He was in Transfers. He was in. Uh, he was the dad in the Blob remake. Art Lafleur. If you when you see him, you've seen him before. But anyway, I mean, when she gets taken and not taken, but into custody with Cobra and them. It, one thing leads to another. She's in the hospital. And like I said, like a slasher film where the guy's walking through the hospital and like you see his shower, you know, he has a rubber glove and squeezes the knife, bloody uh, hand, squeezes the knife. I like the element of the slasher film. I like that. Not much gore, but I know this guy a lot of controversy when it came out. Um, but going back, I mean, why, once again, why do I love this film? Uh, you have the music. Um, Sylvester LeVay... I think he did the compo the score. I think it's Sylvester LeVay. Great score. You know, the do 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 bow down And it's a great score. I mean it's at times almost like a score to a horror film, which I love. Very, you know, mean and you know like a mean score and I love that. And awesome songs. I love the soundtrack, you know, Voice of America's Sons. Uh Feel the heat, the angel of the city. I love those songs. Those are good songs. Great to listen to. Good montages. Nothing wrong with having montages as long as the good ones. Stallone and his movies, they know how to do a montage. Look at Rocky IV. That's like the best montage. Hearts on fire. To me, that's the best montage in a movie. But they do a good job. They great music and... George P. Smiles, I know there was later on it was said that maybe he didn't direct much of the movie. You know, and like Kurt Russell called Stallone and got him to do Tombstone, and basically Kurt Russell really directed Tombstone, but, you know, they say George P. Smiles. I can't buy all that bullshit. Because I look at Of Unknown Origin. Good movie. You know, I look at Rainbow 2. 
I can't think that none of that was George Cosmos. Leviathan. Love Leviathan. What, Peter Weller directed the movie? No. So I think, you know, George Cosmos should get a little bit more respect, okay? And I think he was a pretty damn good director, and it's too bad he's no longer with us. But he was pretty damn good. Of a known origin, Rambo 2, this film, Leviathan, Tombstone, yeah, pretty damn good. So I think it's well directed, it's well edited. Uh, as the movie goes along, yeah, once thing you get good bits of dialogue, and for instance, like uh, Stallings with his partner and trying to figure out what to do about the killings and about this girl, and like this uh, Andrew Robinson throughout the film, he's a sort of a detective, but he's also a prick. His name Monty, and Renny Santoni, Cobra's partner, is like. This is over. Love to help out by putting a hole in Monty's chest. And Cobra's like, you know what your problem is? You're much too violent. And I think Sloan does it well. My favorite bit is uh, when they're in the sort of a uh, police, the police office, and there's like an older superior there, and he's about to leave, and they tell Cobra, "Hey, Cobra, you know you have an attitude problem." Yeah, but it's just a little one. I love that line. I mean, come on. That, to me, for me, I love that dialogue. It's memorable dialogue. I can remember that dialogue. And I haven't talked much about action scenes, but the action scenes, I think, were plentiful. You have, you know, whether it be the opening, you have good, you know, fist fights. When they break, when he finds out that, you know, He's supposed to be at the hospital, and you know something's going on, and some bad guys bust in, and it's well edited. You know, beats the shit out of people. <laughs> you have, in my opinion, one of the best car chases. Now, I have to disagree with Effrey. Uh, we were talking on uh, Skype, and he was talking about how it was. You take the Cobra car chase, but you put it to the twelfth power, and he was explaining the the car chase and the Expendables. Now, I like the Expendables. I love it to death. I like the car chase in the Expendables. But it's not as good as Cobra's. Yeah, I don't think it's nearly as good as Cobra's. First off, Cobra's is a lot longer. Expendables, basically, it's they get shot up, they drive, Jelly gets in the back, he fires a couple shots, they move, get into his warehouse, they go at each other, they crash. Here, though, in this movie, you know, basically, Ray and Tony, and, you know, who's also with this other girl who we find out is actually with the, the gang of killers, they get taken out of commission for a little bit, and Stallone's driving in his fucking 1950 Mercury, he does like a 180, puts his gun, <laughs> blows the shit out of a car, <laughs> turns around, still doing the car chase, and they're... They're bouncing so high, it's hitting the fucking power lines, or the fucking, like, the red, green, yellow lights. They're going through alleyways, crashing the alleyways. They're going in the fucking garage while one's on the bottom, Cobra's car is on the top, and on the top, on the top, on the top, and crashes through the fucking thing, slams down. Yeah, explosions, and to me, it's an... Excellent car chase. Hell of a car chase. So, you know, it's not to, you know, Expendables is a good car chase, but it's not to the 12th power of Cobras. Cobra, you take the chase in Expendables, and Cobras is that boosted up by 10 times. So I think it has an excellent car chase. And the movie, as it goes along, it gets to the ending. And the ending is a fucking excellent ending. I could watch the ending every day. Because they got into this place, and of course the other girl cop they're with is actually with the game killers and told them where they're at. Um, his partner gets shot but not killed. He has to protect Virginia Nielsen. And he did, first off, the night before, he gets his gun. And it's like the submachine gun. And it's, uh, I think it's a Jada, a Jada Matic 